Today on the channel we are looking at one of the most requested tactics of recent weeks and that is Capello's 3-4-1-2 from his time at Roma in the 2001-2002 season. The season in which they won the Serie A, the last time Roma won Serie A in fact, a massive 22 years ago, the last time they won the league. So we're going to dive right in, we're going to run through the results with three teams, we're testing this out obviously with Roma, we're testing this out with PSG and we're testing it out with Luton to see if they can beat the drop with this tactic. Then we'll go ahead straight in and we'll get the tactic shown. So as you can see, it has been a phenomenal season with Roma, with the Capello formation. So we can see we have won the Coppa Italia, we managed to beat AC Milan 4-2 in extra time there, we beat Liverpool in penalties after drawing two each in the final, and in Serie A we've managed to finish fourth, finishing with a record of 18 wins, 12 draws and 8 losses, to finish on 66 points. Take a deeper dive into that league table, see exactly how we got on. Um, if we take a look, we see we scored 79 goals, conceded 56, who did we concede most goals? It was conceded 10 to Fiorentina, that has been a battering. Unfortunately, we conceded 6 to Lazio, so it looks like we've not done too well in the derby there. Taking a look at the overview of team stats, we can see um, we scored the second highest, in fact, we scored the joint highest amount of goals, so I don't know why it's got us in second instead of equal. We've scored the exact same amount of goals as AC Milan. Most shots, we're sitting in 4 to 477. Few shots against, we're not on the list here. In terms of possession, we're sitting up there. Again, joint top, I don't know why it's in second, 59%. Base pass completion, we're not up there. Tackles, we're not in the top numbers there. Most dribbles per game, we're down in seventh at 523. Not in the highest clean sheets, and in terms of conceded, we're not in the kind of top numbers there, unfortunately. We'll take a look at the player stats, player overview, we can see in terms of goals, Romo Lukaku sitting in fourth there with 20 goals. Uh, Angelino with 17 assists, absolutely brilliant for the fullback there. Uh, player of the match, Lukaku is up on the list with 5 there. In terms of shots, we've got Paredes in central midfield with 72. I'm a bit surprised to see that number there. Key passes, we've got Angelino sitting in 8th there with 71 key passes himself. Pass completion, 99% of passes complete to Roy Patricio in goals. Tackles 1, we've got Angelino down in 7th. And dribbles made, we have Rasmus Christensen, the right wing back, on 119 dribbles across the season. In terms of clean sheets, I'm not expecting anybody here, and few is conceded, nobody there either. So we'll go and take a look at our squad, see exactly what the numbers show. So in terms of goal scored, we can see Lukaku's got 44 goals, Dybala's got 23, Asmoon has got 19 from just the 26 starts, Paredes has 13, and then all your players in single digits. In terms of the assist numbers, as we saw, Angelino, phenomenal this season, got 21 assists, Rasmus Christensen's got 10, Lukaku's got 9, Dybala's got 9, um, Asmoon and Pellegrini both have 8 themselves. In terms of the data hub, take a look and we can see we've scored 2.08 goals per game from an expected just over 1.5, so massively overperformed there. Conceded 1.7, we've actually conceded more than we were expected to, which is not really what I'd like to see. Um, but, you know, 4 the Champions League, we've won two cups, I'm not massively bothered there. In terms of the attacking numbers, we've not seen 12.55 shots per game, 13.76 dribbles per game, pass completion rate of just over 89%. Now we'll take a look over the defensive numbers. And we can see we've kept eight clean sheets. I'd maybe have liked a little bit more, but, you know, it is what it is, unfortunately, with this tactic. We can see more goals than expected, so clean sheets weren't going to be that high. Now we're going to look at the team performance. We can see we're expected to score 64 goals. We managed to score 79. Expect to get seven, sorry, expect to get 59.5 points. We get 66. We're expected to finish seventh. We managed to finish in fourth. So overall, a very successful season with this tactic. We've finished in the top four, qualified for the Champions League, and even if we hadn't qualified for the Champions League through that, we've qualified through winning the Europa League, and if we hadn't even have won that or qualified for Europe through the league, we've won the Coppa Italia. So we've won a double and qualified for the Champions League in fourth place. So an absolutely phenomenal season for AS Roma. We're going to jump straight in and we'll take a look at PSG and see exactly how an elite side get on with this tactic. So here we are for PSG, it's a quadruple. We have won the Trophy de Champion. We beat Toulouse 7-1 in that. In the Coupe de France, we managed to beat Marseille in extra time, winning 1-0. The Champions League, as you can see, we beat Barcelona 3-0. Absolutely phenomenal result there. And um, we'll take a look through that, go through all the paths. So we'll look at the group stage first. In the group stages, where were we in a group with? We were in a group with Porto, Dinamo Zagreb, Smart Bag. Expected to get through that quite comfortably. We won six out of six. Fairly easy to go through there. So in the round of 16, as we can see, we managed to beat Sevilla 6-1 on aggregate. In the quarterfinals, we beat Feyenoord 4-0 on aggregate with a 4-0 win in the second leg. And in the semi-finals, we beat Manchester United 6-3 to set up that final against Barcelona, in which we won 3-0. As you can see, Cole Mouani up here with 12 goals in the tournament. And then assist wise we've got Marquinhos with 6 and Dembele with 5. Going back to the competition screen. Take a look at the league table, as you saw, we've won the league, 91 points, we've been top since game week 3 or something like that, as you would expect with PSG. 
looking at the full league table, we will just take a look and see. So we've won 29, drawn four, lost once. We only lost to Nice, our near challengers 3 2. We scored 136 goals with this tactic, only conceding the 38 for a massive goal difference of 98. And as you can see, the loss came on the third last game of the season. So obviously, you know. We'd won the league, so we weren't really playing for it. We were saving ourselves for the cup and the Champions League final, it looks like. In terms of overall stats for the team, we can see, as expected, we scored the most goals. We scored 66 more goals than second place. Nice, in terms of the most shots, 766 for ourselves. Few shots against, we're sitting in second with 250 again. Actually joint Monaco, so it should be first equal. Best pass completion, we are not on this list here. In terms of possession, we're sitting with 57%. Tackles one, we're not on the list there. Dribbles made 640 for ourselves. Most clean sheets, we're actually down in seventh with 11 clean sheets, and the fewest conceded, we are in third with 38 goals conceded. Looking at the player stats now, we'll take a look. Mbappe with 32 goals, Kolo Mouani with 29. Phenomenal from those two boys. In terms of assists, we've got Barcola up there with 16, Kolo Mouani with 14, Dembele with 12, Asensio with 11, and Mbappe with 11. We have five players in the top eight for assists with this tactic. In terms of shots, we've got Kolo Mouani up there with 98 shots, Asensio and Mbappe also in the top four there. In terms of player of the matches, we've got Mbappe, Dembele, Barcola making up the top numbers. Key passes, we've got Asensio up there with 130 key passes in the league. Best pass completion, we've got Donnarumma with 96%. Most tackles won, we've got nobody on the list here. Dribbles made, we've actually surprised we've not got anybody on the list here. There's most clean sheets, we have Donnarumma in 6th with 11 clean sheets in 34 games. And fewest conceded, we actually don't have anybody on that list. So we'll now go and look at the player stats for our team. And we can see Mouani has 47 goals, Mbappe 42, Asensio 16, Ramos 15, Zaire Emery 12, Dembele 12. Kang and Lee with 12 and Barcola with 10 and then a whole host of players again on the single digits. In terms of the assist numbers, see Barcola, 22 assists, phenomenal season for that young man. Then Bailey with 19, he's overcame his injury worries in recent years, 12 goals, 19 assists on the season. Sensio, centre midfielder, 16 and 17 and then you've got Mbappe and Golmai each with 16 assists. Jump over to the data hub. Take a look at the exact numbers. So in terms of goals, we have scored exactly four goals per game with this tactic from expected 3.12. Conceded 1.12, so conceded a bit more than we were expected to at the point nine four. Shot per game 22 and a half. Uh, pass completion around 85.7%. In terms of overall attacking numbers, as we've seen, shots per game 22.53, drills per game 18.82, cross completion 16.7%, and the pass completion at 85.74. So this is a tactic that will bring you goals. Defensively. We expect to concede, as we saw, 0.94. We concede a little bit more than that, just over the one. We kept 11 clean sheets. Um, we won possession. We won possession back 3,600 times. We made about 15.82 fills per game. And as you can see, the other numbers there. Looking at the overall team performance, we'll take a look and we can see we're expected to get 112.5 goals. We got 136. Expected to get just under the 80 points. We got 91. We expected to finish first and we finished first. As PSG, we're always going to finish first. So there we have it. Four trophies in the bag for PSG, and we have blown teams away, as you can see, this season. So we'll now check and see exactly how struggling Luton Town will get on. Predict to finish bottom in the Premier League. We'll see exactly how this tactic fares for them. Here we are with Luton Town, and it has been another great season. Carabao Cup, unfortunately, lost in the quarterfinals to Bournemouth. Lost out in the FA Cup, fourth round to Chelsea. Friendly Cup, nobody cares. And the Premier League, we have finished in 10th place. Bang in the middle of the table. Take a look at that league table now, and we can see... We have won 15 games, drawn 6, lost 17, scored 51 goals, conceded the 46, so a measly goal difference of 5, but we finished in 51 points. We have finished a massive 22 points above the drop zone, which is exactly what you want to see. Looking at the stats for the team, I'm not expecting to see a lot here. Most goals were actually in 8th with 51 shots. We're not up here. A few shots against, but actually did quite well defensively in terms of keeping it tight at the back, we only conceded the 401 shots, possession wise we're not up there, best pass completion we're not here, tackles won, we're actually up in 5th with 913, dribbles made we're not here, few conceded, we're actually 6th for the few conceded goals this season, only Brighton, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool and Man City done better than we've done better than Tottenham which is phenomenal, clean sheets, we're actually in 5th for clean sheets, I'm actually a little bit surprised by that, we've hit 14 clean sheets this season, there's the player stats, we'll take a quick look now, uh, most goals, we get nobody here. Most assists, nobody here. Most shots, nobody. Player of the match, no, no, no. I'm not expecting anybody on these lists at all, if I'm being honest with you. Um, although, Kaminsky with the sixth most clean sheets with 13. Brilliant from him. And few has conceded, he is not there. Take a look at the team now. The numbers will not be crazy. We've got Jacob Brown with 12. 
um, goals and everybody else is on single digits. But you've got a couple on the nine. So you've got Chong, Berry and Morris each with nine. In terms of the assists, you have eight for Kabori, seven for Ogbeni. And again, I know, as we saw, we didn't score loads compared to the Roman PSG seasons, but we're not expected to. So I will take that every day of the week. And now at the Data Hub, we'll take a look and we can see we scored 1.34 goals per game from instead of 1.29, so out overperformed there. Conceded 1.21 per game, so we've conceded less than the 1.4 expected. Uh, 10.84 shots per game, pass completion was 87.42. In terms of the other attacking numbers, we can see dribbles per game 13.82, pass completion 84.72. So we've done quite well, and um, we've overperformed the attacking department there. Defensively now, we can see we get 14 clean sheets, which is above the league average, as you can see. We've conceded less goals than we were expected to. We won possession 3,672 times. Final third passes against uh, 64.42. So we did let quite a few against us, but you know we didn't. We actually did quite well in terms of conceded goals and clean sheets in the league. Now onto the team stats. You can see, unfortunately, despite everything we've seen, we've actually underperformed. We're expected to score 54.6 goals. We scored 51. We're expected to get 52.6 points. We got 51, and we're expected to finish ninth. We finished tenth. When in reality, we actually expect to finish last when the game starts. So there we have it, a very successful season with Roma winning two cups and a Champions League place in the league, blowing teams away with PSG winning four trophies and with Luton Town we've managed to finish 10th, stabilised, kept ourselves in the Premier League for next season. So now we'll jump right in and we'll show you exactly how the Capel 3-4-1-2 sets up and exactly how it works. So here we go, we're going to start building the Capello 3-4-1-2. So we have obviously the three players in the back here we have the two wing backs and we have a serb like this they're going to go through the player roles so traditionally you had a covering defender in a capello system he would cover not quite as deep as a sweeper but he would be here just covering up the balls because the two either side they'd be a bit more aggressive they would be both kind of you know your stoppers they'd be aggressive going forward stopping the play so on both of these we have tackle harder and mark tighter on both of these here We'll just set them both now. Tackle harder, Mark Tighter, exactly what they had on them. In terms of the wing backs, this was a Cafu role. So he was the complete wing back on attack. He would bomb forward. As we know, Cafu bombed forward. He was just set to the standard settings here. In terms of the wing back on the left hand side, that was just a wing back on support. Just set to the standard. Nothing fancy about him here. Now, the two central defenders. I did originally have them both on defend, however, they are both on support because if it was defend, they just felt a bit too far back. But on both of them, we have the additional instructions of tackling harder and taking fewer risks because these were just, they were stoppers essentially as well. They basically just were told, your job is primarily to defend, your job is to just sit in here and hold the line. That was primarily their entire job. In behind the strikers, this was the Totti role, we had the Trequartista, obviously an attack, he already has a lot of personal instructions so nothing gets changed there. Now the strikers, we had Del Vecchio and Batistuta. Del Vecchio was more of the kind of link up man, he played in my eyes the deep line forward, he would, draw, he would drift back in and pick up the ball here. And you would have maybe a bit of a disservice to him, but a poacher for Batistuta. He would play in this role, his main aim was to be in and around the box scoring goals. And then we'll move on to the mentality. So we're going to play with a positive mentality. We are going to be more disciplined. We're going to play it through the middle. We're going to overlap on the right-hand side with Cafu and we're going to have a slightly lower tempo. This wasn't a fast-paced attacking, you know, bombing forward tactic. This was a pragmatic approach from Capello. Something that you see in a lot of Italian sides. In the transition as well, we have him. We have the goalkeeper taking short kicks to the back line and he would slow the pace down. Again, we are not a team that is going to be flying forward. Out of possession, we have the mid block as well as the standard defensive line. We have the press being triggered much more often and we also have get stuck in. So this is the Capello 3-4-1-2. This is exactly how I see it setting up. As we said, this is before the age of sweeper keeper. So you just had the goalkeeper. You have the two stoppers. It'd usually be Zabina and Walter Samuel. The two stoppers going here. The covering defender would usually be Aldair sweeping up the ball, but not set to the sweeper. You'd have Cafu basically controlling this right-hand side here. The left side, it was Candela. He would still get forward, put crosses into the box, cut in a wee bit, but we're just keeping him as a standard wing back because he wasn't as going as forward as Cafu. The two central midfielders were Emerson and Tomasi, whose job was just to hold 
hold the line, hold up play. Obviously, as we saw, Roma legend Totti playing just behind the front two, and you would have Del Vecchio here as well as Batistuta. So there we have it, that is the Capello 3412. If you've enjoyed this tactic, please leave a like, comment down below and subscribe to the channel and let me know what tactic you would like to see me recreate next. And as always, I will see you next time.